first and foremost, I have to say that the tarot has been talked about in many different ways from, wow, this is so woo to it's the devil's work to very mystical secret teachings. But really, if we bring it into modern day, it's really none of that. It really isn't. For me, it has been a way to sit quietly, to ask questions, to look at possibilities and to really kind of uncover a little bit of like that confusion or that uncertainty or trying to find answers for different directions in my life. I will say I don't always listen to the advice. And generally when I don't, that's when I, ah, why didn't I listen? All right. And it does happen, but this is how we learn. And this is also how you will begin to really strengthen your intuition. For me, it's one of the greatest things to help you strengthen your intuition. Now, I know several of you have been through my Empower Spirit program, and we start with learning about intuition, and I kind of finish with introducing the cards. And originally, it was the Oracle. Of course, now I'll be changing that, but it gave you another way to access all the things we had been talking about, finding the signs in your life, looking for the symbols, understanding ways in which to really strengthen that intuitive ability that we all have. So if you were able to go on to the teachery site, you will notice that I did start with talking about your intuition. How do you process energy? Because as you work with the cards, you're gonna to start to recognize ways in which you see these things come forward. So it's gonna be through your intuition, whether you're seeing, hearing, feeling, or knowing. And the more that you continue to work with your energy and work with the cards, the more you're going to recognize over and over ways in which these signs come in for you. So if you have some time, go through those exercises, check out the little video if you haven't already done it and see if you can figure out how you, what I call process your energy, how you read the signs of your life, clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairessence, claircognizance are the four basic, there are more, all right, as you get more advanced, we get into like the smelling and the telepathy and all this, but those are the four ones I like to start with because I really think it helps give you, gives you a foundation. You can have more than one way to access your intuition, but just really starting to present your energy and witness how you experience it is going to really help you tune in even greater. The thing about the tarot card that is really so much fun is that there is art, there is color, there is things that your other side of the brain, not the logical, but the right side of the brain can help you to access that you may not have even thought about. And that's one of the reasons I really love the tarot because sometimes we're so stuck. I mean, how many times this happens to you? We're so stuck on looking at things from one way. And then all of a sudden a picture comes up, a card comes up, a picture comes up and you're like, oh, wow, that reminds me. Or I didn't think of that. And then all of a sudden, instead of being all over here, you've switched to a new way of looking at your situation. And to me, that's one of the funnest things about the tarot. I never think of it as predicting. All right, I don't find it to be a predictive art. I find it to be a projection, a probability, a possibility. So people that say, or if you go to tarot readers or readers that like predict your future, this is gonna happen on this day and this day, that's not really how I teach and that's not really how I work. I really find when we can open the space and open the energy, the possibilities are endless. And I always feel we have free will. Right. So even if somebody says, well, this is the chances of this happening, you still have free will and you still have the circumstances in your life to work with. And in any given moment, things can shift. But for me, and I've said it, you know, over and over throughout this campaign, it's like having a therapy session with your spirit. When you sit down and you ask these questions and you uncover more information, it helps to clear, I think, the chatter. Right. I think it really helps to clear that chatter when we can sit down and be quiet. And as you learn, the more cards you draw, the more time you have to sit, <laughs> right? So you're thinking, oh, I can do a big spread and I got five minutes wrong, right? One card maybe in five minutes, but you'll learn that as we move through this. So I really think that when we start to uncover some of what we call the secret, you're going to recognize that you will have your own language. You will have your own ability to talk about the cards. And I think that's one of the things that they used to keep so secret is like you had to have the secret knowledge in order to read the cards. And so they made them so you know, hard to understand, but I don't agree at all. And I think you're gonna recognize in the way in which we put the cards together that you're gonna recognize ways to talk about the cards. 
ways in which they come up for you, things that it's going to spark, whether you're reading yourself or you're reading somebody else. So traditionally, the tarot has many different origins, they say. I don't know. I don't know which is the um, main one, but if you look back into some of the history of it, I mean, we all know it comes from a playing deck of cards, right? Your basic deck of cards. However, somewhere along the line, it only has the jack, king, and queen, so they drop the page. So somewhere along the line, the playing cards drop that, but originally it did have it. But I think the earliest known tarot decks weren't really designed from what I've kind of uncovered with mysticism inside, but it was really more for amusement. It really was, as a like playing bridge or something, right? I think that's how it originally was. But then it started to evolve. And I think one of the most famous decks that I mentioned earlier was the Rider Waite deck, which was printed since 1909, right? Named for the publisher, William Ryder and the popular mysticist, A.E. White, and commissioned Pamela Coleman Smith to illustrate the deck. So the Rider Waite, when I talk about traditional decks, the original deck, this is the deck I'm referring to. How many people are familiar with this deck, right? It's the one that a lot of people can get scared over. <laughs> it definitely is the most, you know, traditional looking. I know for me, I got very scared. That's my story. I drew the death card. Many people, actually I've been on several podcasts talking about this and people will agree the same thing. Many people will say that death card, woo, put it away. I'm afraid they think somebody's going to die. And that's what I thought too. And this goes back to like my teen years when I first started looking at the cards. And so, yeah, Billy, you're shaking your head. Same thing. Yeah. Same thing for me. It was like, oh my God, is somebody going to die? I don't know. I don't know. And so I just put the deck up and really didn't take it out for a long time. All right. 40th birthday came around and some friends of mine in New York owned a bookstore, um, the Dolphin. Yep. And they gave me the round mother piece cards, 40th birthday. And I was going through major transition at that time. And they really resonated with me. And so I started back looking at them again. And then I really never put them down. I pulled back the other ones. I started doing readings. I took a class at the Edgar Casey Center in New York City. I took a class with another new age shop, Connie, Catherine's sister. I took a, a class with a witch, warlock, whoever he was. A, a um, I forget what their coven was out in Long Island. So I've taken many different classes. My favorite has always been the intuitive tarot, where really your intuition is what comes forward. And as we'll go through the class, you're going to recognize that you're going to have what we call the collective consciousness of the cards, which will be what's in the little booklet. And then you're going to have your own intuitive understanding. And that's what's going to be before you go to the book. So even though you might be reading yourself or reading something and a card comes up and it really inspires you to think about this idea and go forward, that's your intuition. And to me, that is so valuable. And then you may go to the deck and go, well, I don't know. I really like, I go with the first one. That's what I say. Go with the first one. Go with what is inspiring you to bring forward that information. I think sometimes, you know, we tend to go to the deck really fast and we don't give ourselves the chance to really sit and think and open up to what can come forward. So that intuitive class, which was actually the class I took at the Edgar Casey Center, that very first one, was really so inspiring for me all these many years about really intuitively looking at the way in which you can understand your life so much better. So I think that, I think the right of weight is a good deck. I think you'll see it in many cases, people use it as a guideline. I know that um, one of the really popular people out there, Biddy Taro, anybody familiar with her? She's from Australia. Um, she's fun. She has a great podcast. Um, she has a deck very similar to that. And a lot of people will take the Rider weight and make a deck similar to that imagery and use that as their guide. And some people will just totally go totally different in how they look at the deck and how they draw it and how they interpret it. And now, especially because I've been over at Ritual Shelter here in Homewood, here in Birmingham, she has so many decks. She has a movie star deck. She has a spooky deck. She has the witch's deck. She has all these different decks. And many of them now are really taking it a whole step further and totally changing a lot of it. But for the most part, the format of the tarot is the same, no matter which deck you're going to work with. And so that format, which makes it different than oracles, is that they're always 78 cards. All right. With an oracle deck, 
you can have as many cards as the artist or the illustrator wants. All right. And with an oracle, somebody's going to say, okay, you know what? I want to have an oracle deck about, about affirmations or about crystals or about ways in which you step forward in your life or wisdom of the oracles. So they choose what their focus is, and then they can have as many cards as they want. That just depends on the designer. All right, there's lots of different ones. I know up until having this deck for me, Colette Baron reads collection of Wisdom of the Oracles or the Shaman cards. Like the Shaman cards, a great example where she wanted cards related to the earth, to shamans, to medicine wheels, to sweat lodges, right? So that was the whole emphasis. So it really just depends on that. But with the tarot, you're always going to get those 78 cards. And then they're going to be further broken down into major, which is your major arcana, your major life experiences. Then they're going to go into the minor, which is your day-to-day. -day. The minor then is broken into four suits relative to the playing cards, right? If you think about the playing cards, all right? They go from one or ace to 10. And then you have what we call the people cards, the pip cards, the count cards, the trump cards, all named for the same thing. So that in a traditional deck would be the jack, queen, and king. In the tarot deck, we also have the page. Now in our deck, I kind of felt like the page and the king and the queen, I don't know, it just didn't seem as modern to me. And I have for all my many years and all the work I do talk about the elements. Talk about a few elements, air, fire, earth, and water, which directly relate to the suits. And I think they're a little bit more relatable, right? So when I say earth, you kind of have an idea of what earth is, right? It's grounding, it's your money, it's your physical, right? The traditional deck would have it as pentacles. So I don't know, maybe if you don't study anything, you might not know what pentacles is. How many people know what pentacles mean, right? So Pentacles is like coins and generally it is your money. So in this deck with earth, I'm directly talking about your work, your business, your money. So that's earth, that's very grounding. All right, then also too, like the, the traditional deck has the hearts, right? So in, I mean, the playing cards in the traditional deck, the right away, that would be cups. So cups is like, hmm, I'm not sure what that means but the cups relates to the element of water which is our heart. Right, we all talk about water, emotions, flowing. So that's what we use for this deck. Then we also have the clubs in the playing cards. The traditional deck, that would be your swords. So your swords, like I don't really know, swords is kind of like when you think of a sword, it's cutting up, might have a little bit more struggle in it, right? Which is really the same as we're putting out as air the element of air, which is your mind. How many people struggle with the mind? So in this deck, right, when we get into that whole mind, now we'll talk about starting at the ace with a new mindset. And by the time we get to the nine and 10, we're talking about all the drama, the things that keep us up at night, the struggle of the mind and how much it gets in our way. So that's the element of air. And then we have the spades, which is related to the wands in the, um, Spades would be the playing cards. Wands would be the traditional deck. And in our deck, we made it as the fire. That's your passion. That's your desire. That's your purpose. That's what fuels the why of what you do. So we changed it a little bit, which I think is a little bit more relatable and understandable when you go to look at the cards that come up for the day-to-day -day in the minor. And then we have the people cards. <laughs> The people cards, I will admit, are always the most confusing on how to read. But there is an interesting thing that has happened with this deck because we did choose to do the mother, the father, the sister, the mother, the father, the daughter, and the son, is we kind of have an idea of what that is in real life, right? We kind of have an idea. I mean, granted, we had an idea of king and queen, but page and knight, I don't think everybody knew exactly what that was about. But I think we all kind of know a daughter's energy versus a son's energy. We know a mother's energy versus a father's energy. So I think it helps us to relate. And what I've also started to notice is that it's also bringing up some family dynamics. <laughs> well, that mother of air comes up. So the air is the, the mind and the mother, it's like, ooh, do you have a very critical mother? Are you taking on your mother's very critical tone? Is that influencing your life? 
So I do find it becomes a little bit more relatable in how we can understand and interpret the people cards. They will take a little more time because it's, is this an influence? Is this someone influencing me? So we do have to ask more questions when the people card comes up, but don't let it discourage you at all. So that is the basic foundation of the cards for the tarot. And no matter which deck to be called a tarot deck is going to have this structure to it. So sometimes that's why people say, oh, it's too complicated, it's too complicated. But I think as you start to really kind of understand that structure and the foundation, and we'll certainly go through it enough, you're going to recognize how it really kind of plays into life. So for example, if you're throwing your cards out and you get a bunch of those airs, the element of air, then you're going to start looking at the struggle of your mind. If you get a bunch of the of the earth, then you're going to start looking at your work, your money, your business. So you're going to start to see like, okay, what's that influence coming forward? And you're going to notice what that combination of cards are that are coming forward for you. Now, there is one other step in the tarot that makes it a little bit more confusing, although even in oracles, you do have your spreads. So your spreads is how you're going to lay your cards out. So I talk about in the booklet, I talk about a one card spread, a three card spread and a four card clarity spread. And then in the study book, I also go into the traditional Celtic cross, which is a little bit more complicated as well. So when you have your spread, then you also have to look at where the card lies, where it falls in that spread. So if you're doing, for instance, like a three card spread and you have past, present or future and you turn your cards over, it's kind of important to know, is this in the past to the present or the future versus just looking at it? Now, sometimes you can let that slide and you can be a little bit flexible. I know lots of times when I start reading the clarity, which is my favorite spread, I do allow the one, two and three out of the four cards to kind of tell the story because we have that main focus, but we'll get into that as we move through the spreads. So that is why really in a nutshell, the tarot can seem a little bit more challenging. But if you just allow yourself to just kind of get used to the cards, and I think too, as we go along, we're gonna, we're gonna lay them out and we're gonna look at them and we're gonna do some comparison stuff. So I think that's going to be important, you know, that we'll get to understand it. Somebody just texted me, they can't make it a death in the family. Ooh, sorry, didn't mean to get distracted. Anyway, um, all right, so questions so far, questions on any of that? So one of the other things in this deck that I really love is Laurie's choice of colors. Because even the colors can be very healing. When you see some of those warm colors in the earth, it helps you to feel that warmth, right? Or you see some of the blues and the water and all. So the colors are also clues to understanding and reading the cards as well. 